Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to Portal Reloaded. Let's continue. So we're here on Puzzle 4, and it seems like we have an elevator and a button. So imagine here that the button will drop a cube, which then makes a cube, I imagine, start to fall and fall over in the future which means that we can take the cube to the past and place it on this. Right. Now, when we pick that up, that's a problem. So, how are we going to adjust for that? Wow, the, the screen flickered there when we walked through it. Hmm. Okay. Back through here. I feel like most of the instances of the these puzzles will be solved in the present day yeah there's another cube we need up there so this is a puzzle that needs a couple of ideas to happen here hmm So we need to experiment with this idea. Can we grab this? Yes. The question here is, does this destroy the future version of itself when it moves or when I touch it? Because if it's when it moves, this won't work. It is hard programmed to when it moves. So let's try and cheat it. If you can't solve a, a puzzle the way it seems like it can be sol solved, then try something else. There is a lot of controls on this controller, and not a single one of them seems to center the box on this that you're holding. interesting purple glitch there let's just start over again okay if we press this button that means we've made one box there in the future then that potentially means there are two boxes now why is everything glowing purple now hmm let me just hit control buttons yeah there's something something here when you press the Y button as an assistive technology to show you where the cubes are in the future I can't help but think that I'm just gonna end up cheating this in some way This game's really not playing the way Portal 2 and Portal 1 worked. It should be pulling down the elevator and getting it stuck. 
and yet it isn't. And while I really think that there should be a solution, I can't help but wonder if the solution Nope, because if you even bump it a little bit, it destroys it. Hmm. Hmm. Feels like if this is the solution that I should have. There should be like a ledge somewhere to make that more obvious. This will this will work, but I I don't know if this was really what you were supposed to do. Like at the very least, I feel like that was probably very close to what they were expecting you to do. Um, but uniquely, you couldn't put the box here. You couldn't create a pattern of stairs, really, to jump up and cheat it. You couldn't, you don't really see a ledge here that says you should put it there or not. Like, visually, if there was even just like one broken um, step or something, but everything has to be clean for the present time so we spent a lot more time on that puzzle than i think they intended me to we still don't have Always the portal remember, gun if you change the destiny of an object in the present the future version of that object will be affected as well if this sounds too complicated you're in luck the next chamber will only heavily rely on your understanding of this very basic concept almost wonder if these paths here are intentional to imply that there might be some time portal or that there would be another pathway this way in the future um, otherwise you just have to assume that this was the only thing they could make which doesn't make a lot of sense it seems like you could easily take this segment and this segment and then connect it to this point on the end and this point on the end and just have a wall it's fairly off-putting and spooky to to see out of the corner of your eye that there's a thing that's going to be behind you also see a lot of darkness here it's intentional darkness but arguably you might want to turn up the gamma or the brightness in the game um, I don't even know if I saw a brightness option, <laughs> speaking of options. Yeah, we could turn up the brightness if we wanted to, but let's just leave it with the way it's designed. There are definitely some dark sections even in Portal 2 that uh, on a second pass I would have liked to see them make it brighter. Yeah, they could have used these collapsible steps as an idea. Or here. <laughs> this. This is exactly what they needed for that puzzle. Which makes me wonder if the solution to the previous puzzle was different. I guess that's the case and the possibility for any of the puzzles in any of the portal games is that you could solve it in a different way and there's a couple achievements for solving puzzles in a different way. In this case it's just destroyed and dilapidated and so that's how you reach uh, the location. Or well, that's how you reach up on this platform over here. Actually, I believe that's probably what I have to do here is put that down 
and then jump up. So I can then place it there. I do agree with the idea of making a portal 3, a potential portal 3, with portals that aren't just coming from a portal gun. Like, you could very much start a portal 3 and have three quarters of the game take place in a way in which you don't have the portal gun with you at all. And you do have to just walk through uh, the pre-located transition points. That'll get boring eventually and arguably maybe halfway through the game you play without the portal gun. Both portal 1 and portal 2 were fairly quickly to start you off with some kind of gun fairly quickly. But just giving it another upgrade where it could make a third portal doesn't feel Good. that By attractive. Now, you hopefully understand the concept of cause and effect and how cubes <laughs> behave in different timelines. Of course now, you have let's move on to something more interesting. You have plenty of buttons on a modern controller. Like I I can't stress that there's no left trigger or right trigger button here, no left bump, right bump action. X seems to do something. Y does something B crouches you probably won't use that a jumps uh, left stick click right stick click doesn't do anything d-pad doesn't do anything um, back button not doing anything share button probably not gonna do anything I'm not gonna bother pushing it uh, just the ability to zoom in and zoom out with the left trigger and right trigger would be a major improvement Hmm. 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 I heard a squeakiness. Hmm. Sorry, I thought I was hearing squeaking, not like from a mouse, but from something else, but it probably was in the game. starting to hear things I guess yeah there's a lot of little sound effects when that are happening based on what kind of texture you're standing on which is a fairly modern concept to have textures embedded in objects embedded in your coding whether they're reflective whether what kind of sounds your feet make this being more of a soft grass like sound compared to walking on the metal which is more metallic to help create a more immersive experience I'm not really sure about the whole teleporting thing but, uh, hmm. I guess the idea here is that when we get teleported which we're not doing in between each puzzle thank goodness because this load screen is pretty awful um, and there's really no excuse for it to now, need to load that much. For. A very fast RAM, presents. a fast SSD, there's just no excuse for even a 2021 game to, to have to load at all. Not with the levels this small. Like, But it is also important, I think, to point out that this is a game that's all about running physics, where most games mostly try to cheat at physics and have more of a old school video game feel with bigger areas and simpler actions um, of course if you can't really cheat the physics in the gameplay if you can't build a stairs with different cubes and and you can't run and jump and really cheat the way to solve the puzzles the physics may be underutilized I just realized that there is the reason we're probably getting teleported is because that opens up the door to us leaving a level in the present 
and starting a level in the past or vice versa. They don't have to worry about that. And even if they don't actually take advantage of that, it it leaves the door open and they prob probably would want that door the triple open. Portal device. Hmm. Go on. This marvelous device will allow you to place three different portals. For now, however, to introduce you to the concept of portals in different timelines, the time portals will be placed for you. So, I guess left trigger and right trigger are orange portal and blue portal. And so it seems like X is probably, well, I don't, I don't know what button, really. So that's using more buttons um, now. And we can take a moment here to look at ourselves and see who our character looks like. Um, it is a red headed shell like character. Uh, with the anti-fall boots and I don't know if we could get much of a closer look on the face the trick here would be to try and get your eyes to look and it doesn't really feel like the heads and eyes really turn that much it seems like it's mostly just on a random uh, animation loop. Hmm. She's wearing an Aperture Science tank top with a bra or something like that underneath because you can see the straps. And arguably, maybe particularly for a community made mod, you don't just make another female character. Um, since Chell is the beloved main character of the official Portal games, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to throw out a kind of second tier male character who would react in a different way. Because Chell effectively is your silent protagonist, just like so many other video game characters who, who doesn't say anything in any of the official Portal games. So it would make a lot of sense to um, to perhaps have somebody that just totally freaks out and and talks nonstop and um, just co comes off as a different type of personality. Uh, of course, then you can certainly make the argument that there's plenty of games with male protagonists and a lot of them are awful. So, yeah. And you cannot argue with the fact that most people prefer to see an attractive female form over a male form um, of course you're not going to see it very much like you really have to cheat the whole system here to see see your model otherwise most of the time you're not going to see your character I can't say I particularly like the interface with the heads-up display but it does serve a purpose to show you where the blue and green portals are although effectively this also breaks the idea I don't know I guess you could fall down there and you're safe yep there's no achievements because this is a community made fan portal by the way uh, you're not allowed to have achievements I think if you make a fan project and don't sell it like as a mod I, I, if you make a fan project and sell it as a separate game that's fine and I think even Valve would let you do that with the underlying source 2 source code or source 1 source code of Portal 2 but because this was just labeled under the community mod aspect it doesn't have achievements and maybe I'm wrong about that so I'll say I'm speculating you can't have achievements with the community mod. Not that achievements really matter, nor do that that they really do anything for you. There is nothing stopping portals from appearing. 
Um, a portal placed in the present will appear on the same surface in the future. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not particularly sure why you would need to go through time here. I guess you have to shoot it from this point. But a portal placed in the past wouldn't show up in the future. Would it? So, what's the trick here? The trick seems to be, darn it, don't do that, first of all, figure out which one the blue and the orange is on. It's oddly reversed. Blue is on the left, but when I press the left trigger, I get an orange portal. Orange is on the right. Let's see if there's maybe some options there. Hmm. No. Wow. It's, it's just wrong. <laughs> I mean, uh, there's no way el else to describe it. They, they stupidly placed the portal colors in the opposite direction. I wonder what the Emancipation Grid would do with me touching it in the past versus touching it in the future. Hmm. A portal placed in the future will not override its existing location in the present. Hmm. Which is definitely makes things a little confusing, certainly, as to how all of that really is going to work on a lot of solutions. Yeah, you definitely run into a danger now where you could have four portals, two blue, two orange, and just get very confused about things because of that. And yeah, I don't know if this Y button here is going to help with that too much. Right. And the Fizzler, I think, destroyed all portals and all timelines. Thinking in four dimensions means not only knowing where to place your portals, but also when. Definitely feels like there's a danger here where the game is going to get too complicated with time. And so it needs to keep itself fairly believable and understandable. Seems like we are breaking out of the tracks that the game has laden for us now at this point. Going into what would have been a rat man, rat man's den in Portal 1 or Portal 2, although we're not seeing any scribblings of the rat man or anything like that. And so off we go. The idea of panels falling off, I don't think that benefits anything, and I don't feel like I saw this 
in Portal 1 and Portal 2, so somebody animated that. I'm not sure there's a good reason for that to have been animated. Please ignore that. The decay of this facility over the past 20 years may have caused the destruction of some portal surfaces. Try to find a way around this. Time portal only. Here we have the acid slash poisonous water, whatever it is. Interesting. You'd think that the surface should be painted a different color than white if it's only for time portals. Um, obviously this hasn't been just 20 years. Well, this is a different kind of area for an Aperture Labs area in that it is more circular with more of a uh, circular kind of decoration and pattern. Feels more human, less cold and robotic, um, which is not what Aperture Science is kind of about. Well, if I still have the toxic water even now, there, okay. You can put one here. We can put one there. And I think that's pretty much all we can do. Pressing this button just starts the time portal and I don't think does anything else. And then putting a portal on a surface that's been destroyed in the future didn't help, but putting a port portal here does help so we can get to this point and then we're going to make a secondary time portal I guess again very weirdly different from what we've seen in portal as far as how this room is designed and if we're starting to see something like a surface and a skybox then that means we're like at a very top level of an aperture science laboratory where in portal 2 they pretty much showed that it was buried deep deep underground um, unless this is just a fake skybox which would be an interesting reveal and twist but it would be more interesting gameplay wise if we are going to actively break out of little laboratory rooms and be inside of a bigger world okay so what's the trick now the trick now I think would be to possibly move the blue portal I'll move the orange portal. If I move the orange portal, then I could go through here and in the back where I want to be. Let's see. Where I'd like to be. Maybe I need to put the blue portal here. Time portal here. Apparently you can only have one time portal open at a time. Okay. Let's 
So we need something here. Put the orange portal there. That means to get over there, we have to do this. And then when we get to this point, we have an orange portal that we'd like to go to the blue portal, and I think we've got that. Yep. I don't know if I fully understood what I just did. Come here. Like. But seemingly that was the solution necessary. Nicely done. Take note. Because time portals exist in exactly the same location in both timelines, they can only be placed on surfaces which are intact in both the present and the future. I don't feel like that's actually true because I was able to put a portal here in the past and uh, in the future it's destroyed. So I think that was phrased poorly. Let's see. Like. Here's what the Y button does, is it shows you where portals in the other timeline are. So the other orange is over there, and the other blue is over there. Even though you see a blue here, it is the reflection of that blue. Right. Well, I think this is a good enough point to end this episode maybe I should just make save games because since we've seen some iffiness on the controls and such it wouldn't be super crazy if the game crashed in the middle of playing it although I'm not really feeling anything that makes me feel like that would happen I also wouldn't be very surprised uh, yep yeah. arguably if we are on puzzle 7 of 12 we're halfway through the game but these puzzles do feel like they're going to get fairly complicated there are definitely some other elements of portal 1 and portal 2 that could be thrown in to again overly complicate this um, i'm hoping we kind of don't see the turret guns for instance because that'd be a little crazy or bring that out as a final boss fight if we're even going to get a final boss fight um, arguably we very well may not because we haven't really been introduced to any characters or anything like that. This may just be a experience where we go through some puzzles and we solve the puzzles and then we're done without there being really any motivating reason or goal to solve the puzzles. Uh, we haven't been promised anything or threatened by any uh, penalty really if we don't solve the puzzles. Uh, we may just get frozen back in the sleep chambers at the end of the game. Which that would be fine, certainly by me, if there was every couple of years a official Portal game or even a fan-made mod that just gave you 12 more levels of Portal gameplay. And that was it. Although story would be nice. Anyways, that's going to be it for this recording. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend or follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and get me a game off my wish list. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.